Hey everybody, Dr. Doug Lucas here, retired orthopedic surgeon, now focusing my practice on longevity and bone health. If you have osteoporosis or osteopenia, you probably know that muscle mass or improvements in muscle mass is closely and strongly associated with your bone health. And while it's kind of hard to measure improvements in bone health, it's much easier to measure improvements in both muscle mass and muscle strength. So I wanna give you an example of a patient who we were recently working with who came to us with concerns about her muscle mass, her hormones, her thyroid, and a new diagnosis of osteopenia, and she really wanted to go on this process of improving her muscle mass, so I wanna show you what we did. So like I said, this is a patient that came to us with some concerns about loss of muscle mass, a recent diagnosis of osteopenia. She also had some sort of low energy, um, brain fog, just not feeling great, concerns of constipation, a number of other symptoms that went along with this, but low energy, muscle mass and osteopenia were kind of her biggest issues that she wanted to approach. So we did what we always do, which is get a lot of information. And I wanna share some of these with you. So the first thing I wanna show you is her REMS scan. So if you haven't watched our video on imaging for osteoporosis, you should check that out because it talks about the difference between this study, which is an ultrasound study called REMS versus a DEXA. They both show you T-score. This one also shows you a fragility score. But what you can see in this image is that she actually does have osteopenia, although it's not that severe, but it was still very concerning for her. So we put that into her program as part of our goal. Now, as most of you know, one of the things that can cause issues with bone loss over time is chronically elevated CRP or inflammation. And you can see here that she did have elevated CRP. Now we don't know if this is chronic or not, but this is certainly something that we were gonna work on as well. So the next thing I wanna show you are her results around her thyroid and her hormones. So her thyroid panel, which we have listed here, includes free thyroid hormone, T3 and T4, total T3 and T4, and TSH. We also get antibodies and we get reverse T3, so we have a comprehensive panel on the thyroid. This paired with her symptoms was concerning for what it would be considered a subclinical hypothyroidism, even though her TSH doesn't meet the criteria for the diagnosis. If we look at her hormones, you can appreciate that her estrogen levels are either high or normal, depends on where she is in her cycle, because she is still cycling, even though she is likely perimenopausal. But her testosterone is quite low, and her progesterone is relatively low, although this is sometimes hard to capture on blood tests. So oftentimes we will get additional testing when we're concerned about hormone balance in both uh, perimenopausal and premenopausal women. Because her levels are just a single shot in time, it's good to know a little bit more about hormone metabolism. So this is a Dutch test, which is a, is a urine metabolite test. And you can see for her that she had, again, estrogen, which is in a good level. Progesterone metabolites are in a healthy level. And then you can see her testosterone is, is extremely low. And so this would be further evidence to say that she would benefit potentially from testosterone. And from a legal perspective, this is an off-label use of testosterone. And in fact, in women, all uses of testosterone are off-label, but not necessarily clinically inappropriate. Okay, so then we went forward with her program. We designed this custom program based off of our pyramid structure of treatment. So we start with the foundation of the pyramid, which is the foundation of health. So that's nutrition. So for her, this was a protein forward, somewhat carbohydrate restricted diet. Um, and we were focusing on getting things out that were inflammatory for her because of her CRP. We focused on shifting around her exercise. She was an avid exerciser, but she really focused more on the chronic cardio side and less on the resistance training. So we shifted her, her bias and focus to be more on resistance training. Um, and then we talked with her about sleep optimization and stress mitigation, which she had quite a bit of stress in her life at the time. So that's the foundational level. And then we add a layer of supplements. So supplementation for her included repleting things like B vitamins, her fat soluble vitamins, um, a number of other things uh, that just filled in the gaps of things we identified in testing. We also had a genetic profile for her and what we knew that we were not gonna get through her foundational layer. And then the step up from that in that third layer of our pyramid is gonna be hormone optimization. So for her, hormone optimization is going to include testosterone replacement. This is gonna be in the form of a cream. Um, and then we use a desiccated thyroid, which is in the form of a tablet that you take in the morning. 
And the combination of those two for her, I think were gonna be very powerful for the complaints that she had and all of the somewhat vague symptoms that were bothering her. The next two levels in the pyramid include peptides, include pharmacologic management, and we don't need either of those in this case. So we just use those bottom three parts of the pyramid. And then we went forward over the next six months. So what you can see in her follow-up labs is that her follow-up thyroid panel shows complete resolution of her relatively low free T3. Even though her TSH is probably a little over-suppressed at this point, we can adjust this down the road, but she is feeling much better. Her brain fog is reduced, her energy is better, and she's not having any issues maintaining her weight loss. So this is part of the overall picture, but certainly probably wouldn't have been enough on its own. Her testosterone levels are now at an optimized level with the cream that she was using on a daily basis. Another core nutrient that we tested is her omega-3 fatty acids. And you can see in this follow-up lab that she went from a very low level to an adequate level for us. So this was something that we did supplement and she's doing really well with. Now, as I mentioned, she was working with a weight loss company. In fact, she was working with my wife's company, PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition. And one of the things that they do in maintenance is to have you continue to come in, get your biometric numbers so that we know, are you gaining weight? Are you gaining muscle mass? Are you continuing to lose fat mass if you need to? And so she gave me all of her printouts from her maintenance journey. So this is her initial printout, and this shows that she had a weight of 142 pounds, which was a good weight for her. And if you look, go down the list, you can see that her muscle mass was 90.6 pounds. Um, and um, I won't get into all the other numbers there because I could really get into the weeds here. But basically you can see that this was her starting point in maintenance. So most notably look at that muscle mass of 90.6 pounds. All right, and then this is her second checkup. So this is about two months later. And what you can appreciate here is that yes, her weight has gone up whatever 1.8 pounds but her muscle mass went from 90.2 to 91.4 so she has gained quite a bit of muscle mass especially for that short period of time and this was her first check-in after that initial entry into maintenance all right now her third visit you can see that her muscle mass has now gone up to 93 pounds and even though her weight has gone up to 146 which is again four pounds up from where she was three pounds of that has been pure muscle mass and that is a very reasonable ratio if you're going to try to increase muscle mass from a muscle mass to fat perspective all right and then this is her last one where you can see that her weight is now up to 147 but her muscle mass is up to 95.6 so she gained almost six pounds of muscle mass in a little over five pounds or a little under five pounds actually of actual weight and so this is a great example of being able to put on muscle mass slowly over the course of a year but really maintaining weight loss improving her health feeling so much better uh, having tons of energy sleeping better and really feeling good in her body so this is a really good example of somebody who is in a weight loss maintenance phase worried about muscle and bone health putting on muscle mass we didn't repeat her REMS because her osteopenia was so mild to begin with. I really don't think it's gonna get worse if all these other biomarkers are getting better. So I think she is definitely headed in the right direction and really happy that she worked with us. So if you think you would benefit from maintaining or improving your muscle mass and you're struggling to figure out how to do that, sign up for our free masterclass in the link below. This is a masterclass designed for people that have challenges with bone health, but we talk about all the tools that go along with bone health, muscle mass and improving muscle mass. These are things that we do in our practice, but also things that you can do on your own. So look in the description below and sign up for that masterclass. If you enjoyed this content, please like, subscribe, and sign up for notifications so we can notify you when we post new videos. And if you know anybody that would benefit from this information, please share it with them. Lastly, if you have any questions, any comments, please leave them in the comment section below so that we can answer these comments and we do so on a daily basis. I also wanna know what questions you want us to cover. If you have a thought of any question or topic that you think would be great on this channel, please leave it below and we will assimilate those questions and topics and we will put them out as soon as we can when we get enough requests for them. So put yours in line and we'll get to it as soon as we can. Thanks so much for making it to the end of this video. I know this was a long one, but I hope you enjoyed it.